and I didn't believe the firefighter either until I heard the little radio squawk. So when I was on VinWiki a year ago, I was just coming off of a complete disaster with a car. I mentioned it in one video, but I really should expand. Now that it's all settled and done with insurance, I can kind of tell you what happened with my Ferrari. I bought this car, I actually traded for it. I traded an Acura NSX, a 1992 Acura NSX, for a broken 1995 Ferrari F355 because I'm a moron. The NSX is a perfect supercar look, feel, everything. It's, it's a little slow, but it's super reliable. It never broke on me. It was just, it was just a great car, but, but it's, it's not a Ferrari. This Ferrari that I bought, it didn't even run. It had a coolant hose blow on it, and the guy was so disgusted, he towed it back in his garage and just left it there. It had been there for about six months. So I didn't even get to hear it run, other than he was a friend of mine and I saw it going around before, but I knew it had the glorious Capristo exhaust and the noises it made were just incredible. It was convertible, 40,000 miles, so pretty good trade, except I gave him 10 grand on top, so that made it kind of a bad trade. But getting it running wasn't that bad. It was just a coolant hose and poof, I was off to the races. Yeah, for me, I've always been into the cars that I just, loved growing up and the 355 was always one that I was just so crazy about. I saw it in the rock in that police chase in San Francisco where the trolley completely destroyed it. I, I didn't want that to happen, but it happened. The first Ferrari I ever drove was actually a 348. I was 17 in Las Vegas and my dad was up on the tables and rented a Ferrari for a couple of hours. And he went out and spanked it in the desert. They had disabled the air conditioning because they said it might overheat. and. I remember just the adrenaline, the, the, the shaking of, you know, just, oh my God, I'm in a Ferrari and the only car with a stick I've ever driven before was an Isuzu Trooper in a parking lot in high school. My friend just showing me how to drive stick and I'm here just just banging this thing off the red line because I'm forgetting to release the, the throttle when I put the clutch in. I'm, I'm just destroying this rental car. That experience just was with me forever. And this was my first opportunity really to buy a Ferrari. I finally got to the point where I could actually buy an exotic car and, and have a reason to buy an exotic car. So it was, it was a big moment. But the thing in the back of my mind was I knew that this recall hadn't been done with the 355, which made it known for burning to the ground. I also needed to do a major service, the engine out, so it was definitely due for that, but I figured I would wait because I was just a few months away from Monterey Car Week. I live in Kansas, I'd gone to Monterey Car Week for several years, but this would have been the first time I could ship a car out there and have a really cool car for Monterey Car Week where I can go around like everybody else and say, hey, look at me, and, and it'd be a lot of fun driving up Highway 1 with the Capristo exhaust. Oh, the car, the noises that thing would make. And then once I was done, I'm on the West Coast, it would be easy for me to drop it off at a Ferrari dealer to have the recall done, and then I could ship it back home and do the major. Great idea, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting off this major recall that could burn the car to the ground at any moment, just, just a couple of months. I mean, this thing has existed with this problem since 1995 and nothing's happened, so it, it won't happen to me, right? Well, I shipped the car to a friend of mine. He's also a YouTuber named Parker with Vehicle Virgins. He wanted to do some videos with the car and I'm happy to let him do it. It's cross promotion, That's kind of why I'm here, why we go on here. So you come and subscribe to my channel with Secrets Out and also tell stories, I suppose. Vehicle Virgins, he doesn't do too many older cars. He's, he's, a, he's a young man, he appreciates them, but he doesn't do too many old cars on the channel. And he was crazy about the 355. He made a couple of videos of how much he liked it. He actually made a really funny video called Every Ferrari Owner Ever, and he was just making fun of Ferrari owners and the things they do, the shirts and everything else. But shortly after making that video, he started to have problems with the car. He was driving it actually back to his house and he called me and said, hey, it was sputtering and I smell something weird. So I was on the phone with him live and I was like, well, let's troubleshoot this. So he pops the, the bonnet in the back, looks around in there, and he notices that the power steering, the cap for the power steering was completely loose. And he thought, well, that's what I'm smelling. I guess the tank, it's common for them to get stripped and then the cap just sits on there. Uh, I, I didn't notice with the car, but he seemed to think that that's what it was, which was like, oh, great, no big deal. We'll go get that fixed here. Just kind of maybe put a rag on it and put it on to where it doesn't slosh around anymore and then we'll get it fixed and then get on down the road. Well, it turns out it wasn't that because he started up the car, he drove it about 50 feet 
and pff, just massive explosion. This fuel line runs right, right, basically right behind where they're sitting. So not only was it flames behind them, but flames were already in the cabin. The fire was building so quickly that, that by the time they pulled over, the passenger was already starting to get burned from the fire coming in the car. They jumped out of the car and the thing just, just went up. It was gone before the fire truck could arrive. They actually kind of went back to the car because they're insane and they're YouTubers. They went back and got the cameras out so they could vlog the whole thing exploding. And uh, to Parker's credit, he never put it on his channel because he didn't want to profit from this destruction. But I, I, I did, you know, like, okay, I guess I got to get something out of this. But I was sitting at home wondering what was going on because he said he was going to drive it to his mechanic, basically a mile away from where he was. And then he was going to, tell me what was going on. And I said, well, just let me know when you get there and make sure everything's okay. 30 minutes went by, nothing. An hour went by, nothing. Like, well, what's going on? He finally calls me and I answer the phone. And I immediately say, oh, the car burned to the ground, didn't it? He's like, oh yes, yes it did. Which I was totally joking, completely joking. And I thought he was going along with my joke. So when he kept saying, yeah, it, really, it burned to the ground. It's, it's gone. The car is gone. We barely got out. It's gone. Uh, oh, great. One of these YouTube pranks. Good. Okay, Parker. Very funny. You can turn off the camera. No, I'm serious. It is gone. Your car is gone. Didn't believe him. A couple minutes of this. Finally, he had to put one of the firefighters on the phone. And I didn't believe the firefighter either until I heard the little radio squawk, you know, of the you know, in, in the background. Like, oh, this seems real. And then he sent me a picture. This really happened. My Ferrari burned to the ground. It was scary, not just because it burned to the ground, but it burned to the ground in California. I'm from Kansas. What's the insurance going to say about that? Somebody else was driving it. What's the insurance going to say about that? And because I planned on daily driving this Ferrari, I didn't put it under collector car insurance. I put it on normal insurance because of the mild restrictions and other things. I didn't, I didn't want to get in trouble with that. So I knew this is going to be complicated because I had no agreed value. It was with somebody else in a different state. And also, I didn't have a car for Monterey Car Week. So, flash forward two weeks, I fly out to Los Angeles and I rent a Saturn Sky Roadster on Turo. That is my replacement for $30 a day for Monterey Car Week. Quite, quite a, a, a drop in the world. But Parker, he's disappeared. I can't get a hold of him. He's gone. I'm supposed to go stay at his house and he had gone on the gumball rally and something happened where he disappeared. And he came back, he had lost his phone, he had lost his luggage, and that's why he couldn't get a hold of anybody. He had, he had no contact with anyone, and I, everybody's wondering if he's dead, so he's dealing with family members, close friends, and I'm low on the totem pole of contacting people. Uh, but I show up at his house, and he's not even home. We had arranged this all before. He was actually out to dinner with people, and he felt terrible about the situation because he was dealing with so much stuff that he said, oh, just go into my house and, and wait until I get home. So I'm inside of this beautiful giant house just walking around looking at his things. But when he finally did get home, we had a great time together other than we had to go shopping for clothes. I was his personal shopper holding all of his bags because he was going to Monterey. He got to go to the quail, so he needed something nice and smart. I wanted to make a video with Parker to where he didn't get any blame for this at all because he had an incident with another YouTuber where the hood flew up and, and it broke the hood and the windshield and all that stuff. And I didn't want him getting flack for this, but also I wanted to make a video about this because of Ferrari burning down some, some pretty good content. But if he's not around to make the video, then it makes it kind of hard. Also, I wanted to go to the salvage yard lot to look at the car. So I'd arranged all this, but then we went shopping for clothes. And then there was the Ferrari dealer right down the street. And he decided to go in and buy a Ferrari 458 Special Aperta. And I sat through that process of buying a very, very expensive car. And it was fascinating, but we were running out of time. So after going through this beautiful process of buying a Ferrari at a Ferrari dealer, and you know, that whole nice white glove treatment, we then went out to the salvage yard, saw my poor Ferrari and it was, it was gone. After that, I flew home, fought with the insurance. It was one of those typical insurance deals where they say, here's three of the cheapest 355s in the, in your 500 mile radius as comparables. They were all just junk. You know, there's such a wide disparity between Ferraris with accident history and ones that have looked like they've been on Pimp My Ride and, you know, actually nice cars, which is what mine was, a clean history. Kind of mid miles, 355. So, it turned into quite a fight, about a week of going back and forth of them sending the lowest value ones and me sending the highest value ones. And 
finally we met in the middle. So it was a happy ending there where it was actually one of the few cars that I ever made money on on my YouTube channel because of the insurance settlement. So I just got everything all settled with the insurance. I'm waiting for my check. I thought the insurance buyout was ridiculous. They wanted like $18,000 for this burned out Hulk of a Ferrari, which I thought was, was laughable. But Freddie wanted to know what the buyout price was because he'll buy anything. He's bought several cars from me after I've destroyed them or given up on them. It's just what he does. And I figured $18,000, there's no way he'd be interested. So I immediately just laughed and said, no. I told Freddie later and he got so mad. He's like, oh, I want that car, I have to have it. So I had to redo, it took actually a couple days of undoing to be able to buy the car back to where Freddie could get it. But I ended up from California shipping a flamed out Hulk of a Ferrari to Kansas because he said he was gonna come get it in Kansas. Then he decided to ship it. So I, I had the car actually back home for a period of time too, and I had a little funeral for it. Got roses and everything, and we gathered everyone together and, and put roses on the car and said a few words. So I, I did actually get to have a, a proper goodbye before it went to Freddie. And since then, Freddie's taken it apart. He's assessed the car, and it's actually a usable frame. It didn't get melted all that bad. So. He's figuring out what he's going to do, some weird engine combination. I know he's going to give up on the convertible system because it's gone and, and weld a hard top onto it, maybe make it into some kind of track beater. So the, the, the car actually lives on, so I guess there is somewhat of a happy ending here. And I got, I got a lot of money, so that's, that's another happy ending. This month's car stories are sponsored by The Ridge. The Ridge makes a line of wallets and bags that are designed to be minimalist and help us just take with us the things we actually need. So check out the link in the description below for a discount and buy one for yourself or they make great Christmas presents. And be sure to let them know how thankful you are for their support of VinWiki.